that was the tune that you uh, uh, seem to uh, recognise the very famous Beatles song, George Harrison. Uh, <laughs> 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 That's a that's a tune that uh, when you tra take a, a tune as famous as the Beatles song and kind of convert it into an Irish tune, which which we like to do on occasion, it, it it's it's great because it brings it in, into into a uh, into our own uh, tradition and uh, it seems to work very nicely and, and people enjoy the, the development of it as well as everything else. Uh, Michelle's going to tell you about the next song she's going to be here, and it's a beautiful song. And uh, thank you for your attention. We're having a great time. We should be here for a week at least. <laughs> And as you can see, we're influenced by a lot of uh, people outside of Ireland as well, uh, Beatles, and also this particular song is a song that was originally written in French and uh, co-written by the great Edith Piaf, and then it was uh, translated into English, and it is now called If You Love Me. Thank you. 
beautiful, beautiful singing there from uh, Michelle, and uh, they'll be back with uh, another couple of tunes uh, just before we conclude. I've got a, a third little piece for you here uh, this evening, and once again, it's a success story very much associated with Ireland. Um, sometimes if I say to an American colleague, if I say 1774, he say, is it that time already? I said, no, I'm actually referring to the year 1774. Um, and I know it seems like an awful long time ago, but in 1774, a couple of doors down from where we're sitting tonight, um, a young man called William Gibson started a little business, and he began manufacturing pianofortes and harpsichords, which were all the rage at that time, in the 1700s, right up to the mid-1800s. Um, Bear in mind that the success story I'm, I'm, I'm telling you here, the people who are the real beneficiaries, beneficiaries of this success are a huge iconic, iconic American company called the Gibson Guitar Company. Is that a name that's familiar to everybody? Yeah. Gibson? Yeah. Well, Gibson celebrated their 100th anniversary in 1994. And they, there's a wonderful history of their company which which begins in the year 1894 with a man called Orville Gibson in the States. But I discovered that, as I say, 150 years previous to that, there was a man called William Gibson making instruments just down the road here uh, called English guitars, which he sold very successfully to the ladies of Rathgar. Those of you who are not local here, Rathgar is a rather upmarket section of Dublin City, even today, and certainly was at that time. So he began selling these guitars. Now, unfortunately, he went out of business sometime around the late 1890s. Sorry, 1890s? Yes. And he emigrated to the USA. Now, as I say, the guitars were a great success, and there are still some beautiful examples of them in the museum here in Collins Barracks in Dublin. So anybody who wants to check this out, they can certainly go to the museum and see the instrument there. But it's a curious coincidence that then this man's son in America, who was a fellow called Orville Gibson, began the Gibson Company in the USA in a place called Kalamazoo, Michigan, in 1894. And as I say, they celebrated their anniversary, their 100th anniversary, 1994. But according to my research, looking at the instruments here in Dublin, they're actually 150 years older than they think themselves. So I just paying tribute tonight to this man, William Gibson of Dublin. He left Ireland for America after the business failed, arrived in Ellis Island in 1824, and his son, Orville Gibson, is the founder of the Gibson dynasty. He was born in 1856 and inherited this incredible talent from his father. And today, Gibson instruments are played by just about everyone. Uh, I know that Eric Clapton plays one. Eric Clapton known to you? <coughs> Van Morrison plays one. <laughs> Bonnie Ray plays one. And uh, you two play one. Uh, and I play one. <laughs> this is one of those little tunes. Okay. Hope you can hear it from there.
Thank you very much, It's great to be here in the most uh, celebrating the contributions of the United States of America. We were uh, I was just thinking about the last song and we showed them the uh, if you know me a great friend of mine and ours on the stage, Ronnie Wood for the Rolling Stones playing on, on this uh, this new album of ours. And uh, so that's the, that's one of two or three tracks that he's done on the album, but also the, the, the piece we're going to finish with, <coughs> excuse me, the piece we're going to finish with is a tune, or a selected tune, it's called Planet Ireland, which features four reels from different corners of the country, and the last one has very much an American feel to it as well. Uh, this is a selection of tunes we played in Beijing in the Opera House there last July with the Dublin Philharmonic Orchestra and was broadcast to something like 500 million people. Jeez, I didn't know there's 500 million people in one place. Anyway, there is, apparently. But anyway, so <coughs> this is a, a selection of tunes we did on that occasion. And uh, so if you want to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, <laughs> YouTube, I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Uh, that's grand too. So listen, it's been a pleasure to be in your company this evening. We hope you had a great time in Ireland. We hope you have a great time this evening. And we hope to have a great time later on tonight as well. We might see you in a while. Listen, thanks a million.